Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of What the Hell is Wrong with My Bike. So, went out riding again last weekend after replacing the stator, that I did that a couple months ago, and my engine light came on. And I hooked up my handy dandy battery pack here, uh, got it started, rode for a while, light never went off, basically drained my battery pack, had to get another tow truck home. That's getting to be an expensive way to travel. So, we're going to have to do some testing here and try and figure out what is wrong with this bike because it has irritated me too much lately. So I had it towed home, I, I had a battery pack on it, I was testing out my voltmeter here, but let's just see what we got in terms of uh, juice in the bike. Basically I don't have any power because the uh, speedometer isn't even on. Got absolutely nothing. All right, so the battery's stone dead, which uh, hopefully did not damage the battery. Let's hook up our booster pack here. Okay. Let's give that a sec. Let's get her started here. So you can see the engine lights on, which is obviously bad. Let's take off the booster pack and see what happens. Nothing. Basically that battery is dead. All right, time to mess around and see what's going on. All right, so I've hooked up my battery charger rather than using the battery pack here. I've got it set to 10 amps, so I'm not on, you know, crank it trying to start it, and I'm also not on trickle charge. But here's something interesting. So I just hooked up my voltmeter. It's coming up on about 13. And now she's swinging down to 12. And back up. So I don't know what's going on there. That suggests to me rectifier regulator problem. It's not giving me a steady flow through the system here. So that's very interesting. I have to do some more investigation. So I've been letting this charge for just a couple minutes here. And my voltmeter's reading, I don't know, 12 and a half call it, but it's steady. So I guess because the battery was so dead, it was fluctuating. Now that it's got a little bit of charge, it's stabilized. So I'm just gonna let this continue charging and then I'm gonna start messing with things and see if I can't figure out what's going on here. All right, so I've had the charger on it for a little bit here. It's got some charge. Let's just see what we got here. So voltmeter says close to 12. Now that it's running, it's saying below 12, so that's obviously not good. All right, so now we gotta figure out what's going on here. We're losing it somewhere. Okay, what we're gonna do now is test the stator. So I've unplugged it, got it here. Set your multimeter to AC volts because the stator produces, or an alternator produces, alternating current. The regulator converts that to DC. So you want this thing set to AC. All right, let's fire up the bike. See what we got here. Now I'm only at idle, right around a thousand RPM. So there's three nodes here, you want to test one to two, two to three, and then three to one. And they're all the same, they're running in there at about that 25 volts, which is nice and high. 
stator's good, and it should be, because I just replaced it. Strangely enough, with the stator unplugged, the engine light isn't on. I don't get it. I guess the battery has enough charge for the moment. Strange bike. All right, so I think we've nailed it down to, we've got a rectifier slash regulator problem. Um, I'm beginning to wonder if previously, if the old stator was actually good, I did not test it properly. I tested it at the battery, which was probably my mistake. I'm guessing that was showing a regulator problem. However, new stator's in, I'm not gonna tear it apart and put the old one back in. All right, so what we wanna do now is test the rectifier output. And obviously I gotta have the bike run for that. So let's get her started, hopefully. Under 10, that ain't good. All right, so we're gonna replace this rectifier regulator thing. And that's just this guy right here with the little fins on it. And I uh, ordered a new one. Now it looks a little bit different, but uh, looks like it should fit. The plugins look correct. Now what this thing does is it, it uh, regulates the voltage coming from the stator. As you noticed, I was getting about 25 volts from my stator at 1,000 RPMs. That actually goes up with RPMs. So the rectifier regulates that to about 14 and a half volts for the rest of the systems on the bike and the fins are for heat dissipation so it takes that extra energy converts it to heat and dissipates it to the atmosphere so we're going to replace this thing today and it shouldn't be too bad i think there's two plug-ins and a couple of screws on it and it should hopefully just pop right into place let's find out so it should be pretty easy to change you can see there's a screw on either side here and it should just pop out of there at least that's the theory anyways all right, so I got this old rectifier off, and uh, it's quite a bit bigger than this one. Mind you, looking at the holes where it bolts in and everything, should just line right up. The plug-ins look, the plug-ins look correct. It did say it was an OEM style, so all should be well. So we're gonna pop this guy in there and see if it works. So one thing to be aware about when you put on an aftermarket rectifier is the silver screws are the original ones and they're actually a bit too short for the one I bought so I had to buy some longer ones. These are metric, they're six millimeter. This is uh, it's a 1.0 which I think means one thread per millimeter. So they're both the same. This is 16 millimeters, this is 25 millimeters. You're going to need longer ones, keep that in mind. When you're putting in your new rectifier, make sure you put a little bit of uh, thread lock on this. You don't want that thing dropping off the bottom of your bike while you're riding. Something else you want to do is you want to put a little bit of this dielectric grease into your uh, connections here. Now what that does is, is you don't want to get it all over the metal parts. But what you want to do is you want to get it into the uh, plastic parts. It helps seal out the dust and stuff like that. So put a little bit of that in there too. All right, moment of truth. So I've hooked up the rectifier to the stator, but I've left this connection unhooked. So this is the output. And I want to test it to see what kind of voltage I'm getting out because before I only had about 10 volts or something, which obviously wasn't enough. I should be getting around 14 to 14 and a half. So I'm going to just charge the battery a little bit so I could start the bike up and we'll see what we're getting out of this. Looks like I'm getting 13, 14 volts. Not bad, let's plug it in. All 
right, so the red engine light is still on, which is not a good sign, but that's probably because the battery is pretty much dead. But you can see here I'm producing close to 14 volts, which is exactly where I want to be. So we're going to let this run for a bit and charge up, see what we get. All right, so I let it charge up for a bit, and then I shut it off and started. It started under its own power, so you can see I'm getting a good solid 14 volts now. And the engine light was on right till I shut it off, and then when I restarted it, the engine light did not come on. So at the moment, I believe I have this fixed. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you replace a rectum fire on a Victory bike. Why is it a rectum fire? Because for the last two years, these electrical problems have been a pain in my ass. I do believe I've got it fixed now. All I gotta do now is maybe tuck the wires up out of the way and put the seat back on and all that. So, there you go. It's actually very simple to change these. Trying to figure out what's wrong, that's a little more difficult. I had a mechanic look at it in Colorado when I broke down there and he couldn't find anything wrong. Obviously he never unplugged the uh, rectifier to test it or it was an intermittent thing. Uh, same thing with the dealership here. They told me it was a battery. They put a new battery in it. It wasn't the battery. I had more problems. I put a new stator in it thinking that was it. Obviously that wasn't it. So it looks like the rectifier. So. Hopefully, 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 that's the last of my electrical problems, but time will tell. So just a note for those of you who do own a Victory bike, this engine light, by the time it comes on, you're screwed. There isn't enough juice left in your battery to start your bike, and you probably got maybe 20 kilometers before your bike completely dies because it's just, your battery's dead. Uh, that's why I've installed this voltmeter it's going to give me far more information than that engine light will. It comes on way too late, so it's almost useless. Okay, so I want to run just one more little test here. I've plugged my heated gear in, so this is my jacket. My gloves plug into my jacket. And I just plug in this little thing here, which is uh, over and attached to the battery. So, now my battery is still not fully charged, but we should have these electrical problems fixed. So let's start up the bike and see what we get here. Okay, so we got the bike running. I'm reading a good solid 14 volts on there. Let's turn on our heated gear. So that's on maximum. Still reading a good solid 14 volts. So the system puts out more than enough to power my heated gear. Even though I know my battery is not really charged, in fact, it's probably pretty dead, engine light not on. But I'm going to let this run for just a few minutes here. So far, looking good. So let's turn this bad boy off. There we go. I think we got her fixed. And not only is it fixed, but it can support my heated gear, which is good because up here in Canada, springtime and fall time gets cold. And this is the only way you can extend your season. <laughs> 